Welcome to Islam and Muslims. I'm your host, Yusuf Estes, and for the next few minutes we want to talk about an important subject to a lot of you out there. You're asking the question, why is Islam the world's fastest growing religion? Well, in fact, the first thing we always like to do before we answer any question is to determine whether or not the question is correct. Is it, in fact, a true statement? There's a statement in the question. Is it correct that Islam is the world's fastest growing religion? Well, according to the statistics, it is. And according to the politicians, it is. According to the media, the newspaper, television, magazines, Islam is the fastest growing religion. So now we have to ask ourselves uh, exactly who is saying this. Well, just a few years ago, on the White House uh, lawn, when they had a beautiful dinner for the Muslim imams, the President of the United States invited the imams to come, hosted them in their iftar for Ramadan, that's the fasting month, and at that occasion, the President and the Secretary of State were there, and they acknowledged that Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world, and the fastest growing religion in the United States of America. It was published in the British Journal that in England, today, Islam is the fastest growing religion. In fact, according to the Anglican Church, they said that if this doesn't stop the way that it's growing, that Islam will be the number one religion in the British Kingdom by the year 2010. All of that notwithstanding, let's ask ourselves another question. If that's true that Islam is growing so fast, why? How can this be? In light of the fact that so many negative statements are being made against Islam and Muslims on a daily basis, it seems as though you can hardly pick up a newspaper, a magazine, or turn on the TV or listen to the news when somebody isn't speaking about Islam and Muslims. Of course, the usual connotation is in a very negative way. We're seeing a tremendous number of articles being produced that seem to attack Islam or attack the Muslims or the concept of Islam. So this would indicate that Islam should be going down. There's a concentrated effort amongst those who are not Muslim in certain areas of the world trying to convert Muslims to other religions. They even have certain missionaries that are trained just to do that, training them to go out and try to convert these people away from their faith in Islam. So then how could it be that Islam is still the fastest growing religion? What is it that makes these people go to Islam? And it's a valid question. Well, I'm one of those people. I'm one of those who came to Islam. I chose to become a Muslim a number of years ago. And I recall well exactly how it came about. And I found that it has some common points between my situation and what others have experienced as well. So what I'd like to do in the next few minutes is to briefly outline some of those things so that you can have a better idea and a better understanding of how this comes about. In my own case, I remember very well that my father told me one day that we were going to start doing business with a gentleman from Egypt. And I was pretty excited about that. I said, hey, this is great. MashaAllah. And that means that we're going to be dealing with somebody international. We're going to be having, you know, products coming from other countries. We're going to be dealing with people from the where they had the pyramids, the Nile River, Cleopatra. Wow, this is something. Then my father said he's a Muslim. I said, a what? A Muslim? Oh, what we hear from the news and the media. These guys are the terrorists. They're the kidnappers. They are, you know, uh, hijackers. Uh, this is, these are not somebody, uh, people that we want to deal with. My father insisted I meet the man. So I did. But when I met the man, I was surprised. I was very surprised because what I had expected, you know, somebody with a big beard and, and uh, long robes and a big turban on his head, maybe a sword in his hand. This isn't what I found at all. I found a gentleman wearing normal clothes and very peaceful person. And as a matter of fact, he didn't even have a beard. <laughs> he didn't even have any hair on his head at all. He was very nice. You know what? I was thrown off by that, and I started to talk to him, and then I realized, you know, he's so nice, i got to convert him to Christianity. In those days, I was a businessman and a preacher. My father also was a businessman and a minister. He was an ordained minister. And uh, I told my dad, I want to convert this guy over to Christianity. And my dad said, leave him alone. He's a nice guy. Let's do business with him. 
Leave it alone at that. I said, well, let me try. So over a period of about three months, I traveled with this man and I experienced the opportunity to be with him, work with him, watch his mannerisms, see how he behaves, how he treats the people, how he treats business. And really, I was impressed by a lot of things. But along the way, he said some key things that really hit home. He realized from the beginning that I was trying to convert him. He could see it. It was very obvious. I wasn't trying to hide that. I was the kind of person that walked around with my Bible under my arm and had a salib or a cross that I used to carry with me, a big cross and a cap. I had a baseball cap. You know what it said on it? Jesus is Lord. This man was very tolerant, very kind to me. You know what? At one point, he said to me, if your religion is better than my religion, then I'm ready to go to it. I said, boy, we got him now. We've got him. Because what we're going to do, we'll just uh, get the bathtub, fill it up with water, put him in there, dunk him, and he'll be a Christian. He said, oh, and there's only one thing, though. You'll have to have proof. I said, what? He said, proof. Uh, in other words, for me to go to your religion, you'll have to have some kind of proof that it's better than my religion. I said, proof. Religion is not about proof. Religion is all about faith, not facts. It's about faith and belief. He said, well, actually, in our religion in Islam, we have both. I said, oh, what? He said, yes, we have the proof, and we have the evidence, and we have the faith. Because with the proof, the evidence, you're going to get the faith. And with the faith, you're going to realize that this is the correct evidence or proof. In Arabic, it's called ayah, or proof. And I was kind of shocked. I said, uh, what kind of proof are you going to have? I mean, there's so many other religions out there. Everybody has the same thing, right? He said, not in Islam. We have things that are concrete in Islam that you can look to and, and have confidence in what you're seeing and believing at the same time. Well, then he kind of had me on that one. At that time, I had met a Catholic priest, a friend of mine, who was uh, uh, had been in the hospital for a heart problem, and we invited him to come and live with us. At the same time, we invited the Muslim to come and live with us as well. And during that time, you can imagine this, that after we would eat in the evening, we would sit around the table and we would begin to talk about our various religions and the Catholic priest talking about Catholicism and my father talking about the born-again Christians and myself talking about Protestants. We were talking about the different Bibles that there were out there. And then we would turn to the Muslim and we'd ask him, well, what about you guys? How many versions of your Bible, your Quran, do you have? And they surprised us. You know what they said? We only have one. There's only one version of the Quran. I was shocked. I said, what's going on with this? This is too amazing for me to imagine that we've got... Uh, all these different books, and you're telling me you only have one? He said, yes, and it's in the Arabic language, and the Arabic language is the heart and, and soul of this book. So, subhanAllah, this gave me the opportunity now to see something new and exciting, and I began to learn and experience this thing called Islam. The gentleman that I met from Egypt, he was from Egypt, who was telling me that in Islam there's two things, truth and proof. Uh, well, actually, uh, truth and faith. And this subject of truth and faith was surprising me. I mean, how is it you're going to have an evidence for what you believe? Because religion is about believing without any kind of proof. I've heard so many people argue that. In fact, even today, I get emails like that. They say, well, why do you guys, why do you Muslims feel like you have to have some kind of proof or evidence or a miracle happen in front of your face or something? Why can't you just believe? And the answer in Islam is, we do, we have, we have both. We have the faith, we have the belief, but there is a proof too. We don't need to throw it away. We have that. So that's where we started, and it was about the Quran. The Quran is a miracle. And now for somebody who says, well, my Bible is a miracle. Well, actually the Quran is not denying that the Bible is originally from God anyway. I'd like to have a chance to tell you in a segment or run a program sometime and talk about the Quran from a standpoint that might shock you, might even for Muslims be surprised to learn some of the things that we know about the Quran. But this program we're talking about today is the idea of the introduction to Islam. Now some people, they look at Muslims and think this represents Islam. But that's a mistake. 